you so much. I'm really, really happy to be here again. It's the second time that I've done Why There Words. Um, and this is the 41st reading of 44 readings that I'm doing in uh, less than three months. So I'm almost finished. <laughs> um, and it's been super fun. I'm going to read back and forth between Radiant Action, which is this long book-length serial poem that I worked on for five years. It's kind of a, a meditation on the power of, of art to transform and change and explode the possibilities of our lives and connect us in, in ways that are unexpected and unpredictable and wonderful. Um, and then Radiant Companion is a collection of poems that I was working on at the same time, which takes the same themes that are in the meditative poem and spins them out toward particular people. So I'll start with the with a piece from the long poem. I'm not going to read from my phone, but I'm going to use the light because I'm blind. <laughs> Back in black, in the air, at my desk, a morning dove cooing an emergency for someone. The plants in their pots in the whitewashed light won't stop swaying, blow up into meaning, meaning. Everything today is full of present intensity, simultaneity, Guillaume Apollinaire and his dear pretty redhead. But I'm thinking about what it means when I drink a glass of water and call Russell or Jen, Amanda or Nate just to check in and ask them what they're looking at right now. How it strikes them in the heart or the head, maybe even the mouth. And also to tell them today I ran around beheaded with feathers. In my office, I made flyers with Sam for Adam's reading. I looked at pictures that Billy took of Moby Dick in an aquarium. Not the whale in an aquarium, but the book about the whale in an aquarium. I just can't get away from it. This life in the air all around me, this desk, philosophical investigations, the sonnet, even this Touche Amore t-shirt that's sweating with activity, more and more blotto, a beautiful calamity, all the particulars I have to keep listing so that they won't want to leave me lime green stapler and a yard full of weeds the old dogwood tree at the moment it's in white blossom and all done up with bees for the honey to come the vatic sublime and a puddle of blood huge glowing eyes wild exaggerated hair which is no one i know but a painting of john clare on a postcard beside me the sound of someone typing does it look like your life when I open my life? <laughs> so my daughter, Agnes, who is in many of these poems, is 10 years old now. And when I started writing them, she was five. Um, and she used to be very impressed by me, you know, all, the, <laughs> all of the things that I do. But now she's decided that she only likes the poems of mine that she's in. <laughs> so I always feel like I should read something that she's in, especially when I'm so far away as much as I am. Um, this is called Reaching the Awe Sound. Here and now, this blue winter sky and outside a light frost, the windows of the houses and the windows of the cars, I walk out on the porch and my glasses fog up. I start my engine to make things warm. Voices swirl around as a white muzzled dog trots by in this marvel of everything good. Morning. Back inside with the radio on, the word in the air is terrorist suspects. Videos of child soldiers executing spies. I wrestle the juice from an orange in my mouth. I read the beginning of Song of Myself, the price of petroleum, the coming election, the stepped-on spear of dead winter grass. I do not loaf. 
I lean on the counter and call for my daughter. She puts her small self in a puffy blue coat. I put my small self in a black wool sweater. I drive her to school with the radio off. She spells words with the aw sound in them. Awesome, outlaw, walrus, autumn, divides by nines from 108. At the drop-off spot, she gets out of the car. I love you, I say, I'll be back to pick you up. And when she shuts the door, I turn the radio on and then I turn it back off. At home, Greek yogurt and pistachios and pecans, a little honey, I drink life down to a hot cup of coffee. This soft dailiness, my ordinary yaw and drawer and author and off. This picture of heaven where there isn't any heaven is as good a place as any to begin to make a heaven. Either we give ourselves to a course of action or we do not give ourselves, wrote William Carlos Williams. The rest of the day I am mostly messed up. I go on my nerve, I celebrate myself, I burn through the air with my hands held out, heaven with the radio off. My veins with your veins, my noise with your noise. If I tell you a secret, will you keep it? Will you pocket this minute and promise not to spill it? Nothing subtle about it, nothing refined. Where are we supposed to be? Flour, sugar, salt, some other useful but non-lethal staple. My international bitterness unit is high tonight. And the clouds, the clouds, like the snow, the snow in those previous poems. Anyone who's ever seen me read in public knows I don't shout all my work. Sometimes we can hear a pin drop and form and structure. They're always a concern. I try and follow the poem somewhere, let it slide into itself like a runner into third, like a romantic into blank verse. I want to go home, but I'm not sure where home is. That I keep failing to get there in poem after poem, book after book might mean I'm doing something wrong, or it might mean what I'm after is in Dante or Coleridge or Whitman already, so doing something right has to be in defiance. Doing something right has to be a defiance of all my preconceived notions of what a poem's supposed to be on the page, in the air, in the history of gravity and clarity. Fuck clarity, I can talk the public talk. I don't want to go home. I want to go to heaven. I want to get high into, not on, the sounds of waves, the sounds of words, the poetical riddle. Go ahead, be enlightened in all the fake, cheap, and standard ways if you want to. It makes no difference. To be enlightened is still to be surrounded by darkness. I want to be a light obliterating everything, the radiance of a thousand suns all burst at once, but of life, not death with mercy and splendor. And I want you with me, dispelling all bewitchment, the shadows cast and the cast of shadows, radiant the action, which is art and also life. Imagination in defiance of our limits makes the world. So this will be the last one. There was a, uh, a Bay Area punk rock band called Jawbreaker, which was super important to me when I was growing up. They had this amazing song called Ache that begins with the lines, I believe in desperate acts, the kind that make me look stupid, which has become a sort of uh, mantra for me. And, and I'm... I took my car and drove it down the hill by your house. I drove so fast. down I turned it around and came back up 
You were waiting on your step, staying showing off your breath and watering your eyes. We pull each other into one, puckers clinging on the law, and just right there. And the stanza breaks from mine. I don't know why I thought about that then or why I'm thinking about it now, except that it's a song you should know if you don't already. And it has a fragility to it, a vulnerability in its lion flaming punk rock heart that reminds me of your poems and how longing never leaves us as long as we live, which is lucky. And even better, I'm suddenly struck by the image of a rowboat on the sunset horizon with one lonely figure rowing into the distance out to sea. And in this image, which is really the world, I'd like to call out to the figure in the boat, to the him or the her, who is probably you or me or someone just like us, someone in need, but they're too far away to hear me or I'm too far away to hear me. And yet that doesn't mean I shouldn't scream and scream to try and get their attention because attention connects us and generates possibilities and possibilities are the stitches that we use to close the wounds, the ones that we inflict and the ones inflicted on us. Yeah, the world is pain, but attention is rich and connection changes everything when we allow it to sing us. The sun going down so light and enormous, the pink and orange wave, their marvelous chorus. I took my car and drove it down the hill by your house. I drove so fast. You took your boat and rode it out both to listen and men. I'm standing here hoping to get your attention. Longing for its own sake is a letter close to heaven. Longing words continue the world. 